This video I'm gonna try and make quick. I'm gonna do, uh, I'm just gonna talk about fathers more specifically mine and uh, you know, as is a general rule for all of us who are lucky enough to have a father in our lives and uh, even more so lucky if we have a virtuous, uh, you know, righteous, patriarchal, hardworking, all of the virtues that a true man should embody not in the subverted world that we live in society today where uh, traditional masculinity has been cast aside and um, you know demonized and all these sorts of things but anyway um, as I said in a previous video I recently took my motorcycle course and uh, it, it was very hot outside it was you know humid and up somewhere in the 90s and um, my father sat out there both days the whole time just to be able to uh, watch me do it and um, you know in his mind I guess show support but um, you know that's not and I'm not a kid you know as you can see I'm a grown man so I'm not quite 30 but I'm getting there and uh, you know that that's something that a lot of fathers wouldn't even do for someone in their early 20s or uh, younger and I didn't ask him to do it you know he wanted to do it so I figured you know let him do that but um, you know I'm not gonna lie to look up there at certain times and to see him watching and you know encouraging and telling me to calm down you know miming it at me and all these sorts of things you know it does make a difference and it was nice to see him there and it was a nice gesture and um, so a lot of us aren't blessed to have father figures in our lives and you know whether they passed away early or whatever the case may be they were less than virtuous and you know they left or they we just have very contentious relationships with them because of abuse or what we perceive to be you know sometimes we mistake tough love for a cold heart and this sort of thing but to be to truly exist as a man in this society and in this world is a tremendously daunting task and even though we're far removed from the frontier of survival you know we we don't know every single aspect and nuance about our fathers we don't know everything they've had to go through in their lives and the reason that they confront us in ways that you know they do a lot of times is because they've witnessed things or they've experienced things that they want to prepare us for and you know strengthen us for so that we are better prepared and don't meet it with the you know we don't get caught with our pens down so to speak as they may or may not have and so a lot of times you know when you're young you don't understand the reason that your father does the things he does or you know approaches you or interacts with you in the ways that he does maybe he seems emotionally unavailable you know maybe in his world growing up the father was just a provider and that was it but uh, what, I, what I'm trying to get at is that there are a myriad of circumstances that uh, enchant us and that you know throw stardust over our eyes so that we develop a perception of our fathers that is you know not in the most positive light in our eyes and uh, as the years go on you know we feel like we don't necessarily have anything to learn from them you know they may not have been there in the past uh, and now that you're older but you have to realize that as you get older they don't have necessarily the extremely uh, daunting and difficult task of raising you they can interact with you more as a colleague or more as a an equal more as a man and when you're a kid they have to approach you in certain types of ways so there are those restrictions and constrictions bearing down on the whole dynamic so I think it is necessary as we grow older as men and we learn what it takes to actually be a man to be a virtuous man to be a patriarchal man an alpha man uh, stoic man all these sorts of things that we reconcile with our fathers and we return to them and you know we return to them with a 
different orientation of our minds and our spirits and our emotions and all of these things. And we're more understanding and we're more wise, hopefully, and more knowledgeable. And so we no longer have the glasses of, um, you know, the mentally inept stages of childhood over our eyes, corrupting and distorting the whole dynamic. You know, now we can hopefully see more clearly. And it's necessary to reconcile with your father because you have to, there's a sort of, I guess, rite of passage that allows you to move forward in your life and uh, manifest your ultimate potential as a man. And this thing, there's a gatekeeper there and it seems to be that that gatekeeper is the reconciliation that is awaiting between you and your own father whatever it is that needs to be reconciled you know it could be minor things it could be major things but we all need to you know because otherwise we stay trapped in that juvenile consciousness we never we progress chronologically in age but we stay frozen in the childhood in the stages of childhood the childish mind and all this sort of thing and then so there are many reasons that we need to reconcile with the father and, um, you know, some of them are archetypal and, you know, the stages of our hero's journey and all this sort of thing. But I think it is absolutely necessary that we devote time to um, making the time to reconnect with our fathers and make the effort to understand them from a different perspective, not just as that, uh, that you know, that uh, person that in our childhood seemed to be like very stiff, very frigid, very, um, you know, unmoving. Uh, now we can sort of see that they weren't always that way. We developed this misguided perception of them. We became enchanted by it and uh, our vision was distorted and this sort of thing. But as we get older, we can understand the wisdom that they have to give and the wisdom that all of the experiences that they have and uh, in my own particular case you know over the years in my my teenage years I drifted very far apart from my dad he was always around but um, he wasn't really a person that understood the subtle nuance of the emotional aspects of raising a kid or a son or a daughter and his main goal was to, you know, keep a roof over our head. So he was very emotionally unavailable. But from what I've heard and, you know, things over the years, it seems to, you know, he did a lot better than his father. He had a very, very severely uh, tumultuous and unstable and just impractical, you know, unsafe childhood. And I give, I'm surprised he even made it through that, you know. Uh, he wasn't born here, born in Puerto Rico, uh, in very in impoverished conditions, and there were 10 kids, and, uh, you know, you can imagine, in a makeshift house, and, um, so we have to understand that the reality that we perceive or that we were in, engrossed in growing up is not what our parents and our fathers more specifically were, uh, that wasn't the way it was for them a lot of times and so you can't come to that understanding until you, you put yourself as best of, to the best of your ability in their position and try to understand um, a lot of times it's impossible because you know in our cushy lives that and you know our childhood was far from that but it was a lot better than his and so I don't want to drone on and on, but uh, I'm just trying to get the point across that, um, you know, in the, you know, the car ride there and back to the motorcycle course and, you know, little snippets and things that he disclosed, a lot of times you'd be surprised. And my father's not an educated person. I don't think he even went to high school, but um, he has a lot of wisdom about life. And he's, sometimes he comes at you with snippets of things that would lend themselves to someone that is educated and it surprises you. And so we need to always keep an open heart and open mind and understand that 
our elders I have tremendous wisdom to um, give out and we need to be of the proper vibration to receive it and um, make an, a concerted effort to count the blessing that is having your parents in your life and uh, I know no one's perfect we've all experienced traumas and things at the hands of our parents the people that were supposed to be there for us and that didn't make the mark at certain times but we need to understand that for the most part it wasn't intentional it wasn't for nefarious reasons or sinister motives it was just the best that they could do at the time their limited understanding because we all have a limited understanding so i was just you know amazed to see that you know, you, i was picking up snippets of knowledge and wisdom and things that he was laying down here and there and um you know, going forward, I'm going to spend more time together and uh, count the blessing that is having my father still around and one that cares to a tremendous degree and he's always been that way, even if he cares from afar. Um, he's the type of person that cliche that'll give you the shirt off his back, but he has proven that time and again and he'll give you his last cent if he has to and um, I'm blessed to have that sort of uh, father figure in my life and to learn the value of do, being honest and working hard and you know having integrity and not looking to cut people's throats or you know get over on people and all this sort of thing so that's the video I want to make make a concerted effort to reconcile with your fathers it must be done it is a necessary part of your journey and your ascension and consciousness. So check out my other videos, like this video, leave your comments, your suggestions, your feedback, anything you want my perspective on. If I could leave some uh, words there in the comments, I'd be happy to do that. Check out my other channel, Ray Rivera. Subscribe to this one, to that one. I do art and music on that one. And uh, thanks for watching.